Hey everybody, welcome on in for day two of ClayShare Con. I am Jessica Putnam Phillips, the founder of ClayShare, and we are so excited that you joined us again for another full day of pottery making awesomeness. Today we have a great lineup for you. We have got a hand building a mug tutorial. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple mugs here, but we're only gonna make one today, but once you make one, you could make as many as you want. Then we have a really great tutorial with Jeff from GR Pottery Forms. He's going to be making plates with textured lips. That sounds interesting to me. I want textured lips. And then we have hand building with flexi bats. And after that, I will be back making trays. We've got some trays behind me right here with sand bow underglaze decals or underglaze transfers. So I'm going to show you how to make a tray and use those to do that. And then after that, we are going to be making a planter. That'll be me teaching you how to make a planter. I got, a, I got an example right here. We're gonna make a super cute little square planter. And look at that cuteness. And what I love about this is I'm gonna show you how to get one the size you want it to be at the end. So say you have a windowsill that's only four and a half inches wide and you want your planter to fit that four and a half inches exactly. I'm gonna show you how to make one measured wet that when it dries and shrinks will fit that perfectly. So we're gonna be using a Diamond Core Tools shrink ruler to do that. So I'll show you how to do that. And then after that, we have one more demo today. We have a, a little switch in the schedule today. We have Sharon Hoppy doing deep flowers. So that's gonna be really fun. That's moved over from yesterday. And then the Garrity hand building demo is being scooched to, what day did we put that on, hon? I can't remember, Friday, I think, I think it's Friday. or Saturday. It'll be up on the schedule on ClayShareCon. We had to make a few little adjustments. So that's what we got going on today. And then at 5.30 is all the giveaways. That's it. Woohoo! day two. All right, you guys. Are you ready? Are you all excited? Are you enjoying ClayShareCon? You ready to make some pots? I'm pretty excited. I'm going to share with you the gorgeousness, this mug. This is one, a mug I made uh, for a tutorial, and I ended up keeping it. So this is mine. Um, here's, I don't keep many mugs. Here's another one. We're going to do a glazing combo with Mako and another one with Amico. And I'll, I'll show you how to do this. This is my Daisy rolling pin, which has gorgeous texture. I also love this. I'm into yellow lately. This yellow one. This is my town rolling pin because it's Jess's town. That's the name of the rolling pin. So I say it's my town. <laughs> and I got a couple others back here. I'll just, I'll just show you. This is a really beautiful mug uh, I made using MKM mud tools. The glaze is my Chun Blue with my spearmint on top and then a tiny bit of cream. And you can get all of those from Clayscapes Pottery. We're actually giving away six packs of those glazes. Not the cream, but all the others. And then another mug. Do you like mushrooms? Because if so, this one's for you. This one and the green one is my Oribe with cream on top. How yummy. I just want to show you. the. I know it's not a glaze tutorial, but we all get caught up in the beautiful glazes. And then this one too. Okay, so let's, let's make. Let's make, make a mug. I better, I better move these out of the way because I'm prone to knocking stuff over. All right, so sound is much better today. We've been working on the sound. So I'm going to do my, my interpretation of Mr. Rogers. So I come into the studio and I take off the flannel. Actually, usually I have the flannel on, but doing live demos, I get too warm. Never happens any other time. And oh, what is this? I'll be putting on one of my handmade aprons from Charlie Savo, Play in the Mud Designs. Oh, wow, look at this cute thing. We're giving away one apron a day. So you could win a handmade pottery apron. How awesome is that? How does it sound? I just wanted to check and see if my mic's working today when I need to come in. Oh, I see. He's going to well, be talking to today. Everyone will let me know. <laughs> All right, so I got my apron on. Didn't really want to wear it because it covers up my clay share con tee, but the apron's so cute, you just have to wear it. All right, so we're going to start with a slab that I've rolled out to about three eighths of an inch. I often will show you guys how to roll out a slab, and I have a free video on rolling out a slab on ClayShare.com. So you can go watch that if you want to learn how to roll a slab. I also have hand building a mug on ClayShare.com where I, I roll the slab out and we make the mug from there. But 
we're going to do it a little different today, I think. I'm going to go ahead and start with a pre-made slab. Or do you guys want me to roll you out a slab? It's your choice. Would you like me to roll out a slab for you? Or do you want me to use a pre-made slab? This is the choose your own part of Clay Share Con. Sound is good. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys have good sound. That's really important. Like, if you can't hear what's going on, then how do you know what I'm saying, right? You're having your coffee and your hand-built mug with texture. Awesome. All right. So I think for texture, you know, you can use anything you want. You can use lace. You can use stamps you bought. You can use stamps you made. You can make your own textured carved roller. I have a class on that. You can make a texture ball. Got a class on making that too. You could use some lace. Uh, you could use some little wooden rollers. These are by Sandbow Studios. You can use rolling pins, which guess what, folks? Today, we're going to use rolling pins. And because we've had a record amount of snow this year and I'm ready for spring, I'm going to do the spring bunnies because I need some spring bunnies in my life. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, all of my rolling pin designs you can get from Sharon Hoppy Designs com. So you can go there. She has her own designs and I have mine that she sells um, as well. My mushroom rolling pin I showed you all earlier. Well, I showed you that mushroom mug. This is the rolling pin. So if you're into mushrooms, you can make a whole dinnerware set with the mushrooms, the daisies. Daisies are a favorite. And there's a whole bunch more. I got bees. I got succulents. I got southwest. I got my Moroccan tile, but bunnies. Today's bunnies. Because by the time it's dry and ready for glazing, it'll be about a month and then we'll be almost into April. So, all right. So nobody's saying, do you want me to roll out the slab? No to rolling out the slab. Roll out would be great. All right. I can roll it out really fast. Kev, I'll need you to grab my clay though. And I believe you will find it uh, is on the end of my slab roller. You'll have to go to the B mix. Yeah, he's got it for me. I, I, I can roll out a slab really fast. The um, only difference is that it takes a little bit of time. I'm gonna get, and I think my rolling pin's over there too, huh? So you'll have to grab me my plain, not textured rolling pin. You can do it. You can carry the clay. All right. I mean, if I roll out the slab, then we have less time shaping the mug. That's all. Because I have, ah, oh, I got 40 minutes. 39 technically. I can do it. That's what I need. So you're going to use a couple pounds of clay. I always like to roll out enough to make more than one mug. If you're going to make a mug, you might as well make two mugs. There's, there's no point in making a mug and then rolling out your clay to make a second mug, right? Normally I will use my slab roller and I'll roll it out to three eighths of an inch to a quarter of an inch, you know, somewhere in there. The reason I go really thick is because when we roll the texture in, we're going to thin the clay down again. So it gets thinner. Plus if we're going to stretch it and add volume to it, we're going to stretch it again. So we're going to cut off uh, about four pounds of clay, maybe five. Yeah, I think it's four. Not a lot. This is Laguna B mix with no grog. It is a mid-range stoneware. I fire mine to cone five, but uh, some people go to cone six with it. It's up to you. Daisies are your favorite one of my pins. Uh, will it ever be available in 12 inch, Morgan? Uh, I would have to redraw it. I don't know if it will. Sadly, um, the way the pins are, are kind of kind of how they are currently. All right. I need this. You know what I was thinking? Without this, you need this. So this is just a broken rolling pin that um, I kept the body of the rolling pin because I use it as like a mallet to beat things up. And are you on the overhead? Yep. I use it to do this. Because, you know, if you're rolling, you're going to be rolling for a while. Plus, this is a good way to start your day in the studio. Just beating on clay. I can't say my day, you know, all right, you know that never say never <laughs> phrase. 
I can't say never as far as that daisy pin being 12 inch, but it's honestly not on my radar right now. I have so many things going on that it's, it's, oh, would be a ways out. Like, maybe the end of the year if I ever get to it. Um, and that's the reason why there isn't one yet. All right, anyhow. So you just want to get this started. Now you can just throw your slab if you prefer. Some people only throw slabs and just turning it over. That's a little hard on my wrists and it's really hard to throw a great big slab. So, so I don't. <laughs> and so we're just gonna roll it away from us and turn every time. And the key is we're rolling on the sides, but we stop before we get to this edge. If you roll all the way and then ba bump off the edge like that, what happens is you flatten this edge. That makes it thinner on the sides. So you want to keep those nice and thick. And I'm turning them, but you do want to flip it as well. So turn and flip. And the reason you lift it up in between is you need to release it from the board You'll notice the underside here is getting very wet. That's because the clay is sticking to the board. That's not a problem. That's what happens. And once you roll it out, the clay won't move anymore. So you gotta release it and flip it over so that you can keep rolling. And if you roll it out on a board like I'm doing, and it's fresh from the bag, the clay won't be sticky. It'll be easy to work with. You know, often if you roll out on something like a slab mat, which are, they're great, but they're non-porous. So that means your clay stays really sticky. And when you go to make things, your clay is very floppy. So if you have a problem with floppy clay, you could do as I do. I, I roll out on a board or you just let your clay sit up a little while. That's all. No to rolling it. So, um, <laughs> so your daughter walked in the studio where you were banging out a hunk of clay and she looked like she thought you were crazy. Um, I know I did a video once of, uh, a while ago about how I start my day. And it, I mean, it, it's how I do it. You know, even when I use my slab roller, I do that, I'll cut a bag of clay in half and I will kind of pound it all down a bit and then roll it through the slab roller. So it's, 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 it's kind of fun. <laughs> all right, so we're still, I mean, a little thick. Let's see. And so now I'm just going to lift it up. Not going to worry about flipping it over anymore. That's pretty good. Uh, you can get thickness strips. I guess I should have mentioned that. Let me grab some. Do I have any in here and left? Ooh, I got one in the back. Hold on. I got some. Woo! So you can get these things called thickness strips. They are in a set of usually eight. You get pairs of thicknesses. That's why they're called thickness strip. So if you want to be sure you roll your clay out to the correct thickness, you lay them down and you roll your slab. And these are like rails so that the clay rolls along. The only thing I don't like about this is they can only be as wide as your rolling pin, so you're making long, skinny slabs. You know, if you really want it to be the exact same thickness all the way through, and that's a big part of your pottery making, I would invest in a slab roller because these are great, but they're limiting. You can always freehand roll like I just did, and you can see this is pretty even, but I've done it a few times, so that makes it slightly easier. All right, slab is rolled out. Now, ready to go. I have got this yellow rib. It's made by Cheryl Mud Tools. And I just like to use it to smooth the clay out. You know, it gets rid of any surface imperfections and it helps to align the particles. You know, that's one of the things we, we always talk about to, to help prevent your clay from warping, believe it or not. All right, so there's one side. We're gonna do this to both sides. So this is compressing the sides. And we're gonna compress both sides. 
you get air bubbles when you roll out your clay. Um, so you shouldn't get any air bubbles unless, you notice I didn't wedge my clay. So if you're getting air bubbles, it's because there's air trapped in there and that happens when you're wedging clay. So you just need to wedge longer. Or what I do is if I just have one little air bubble, you just take your little knife and you just pop it and then smooth it over. And if you have a little indent, you just take a bit of clay, fill it and smooth that in. So don't let bubbles, air bubbles stop you. They happen from time to time. All right, so we have a smoothed out slab and now we want to add our texture. Like I mentioned, I am going to use this really cute check, bunny. Check your focus, it Did it come back? Struggle in. Yeah, who's going to get another new camera? <laughs> right, so here is my template. And so you really just want to make sure you have enough clay. I, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at this and I can tell I have one, two, I could get three mugs. I think I can get three mugs off of this. Possibly, definitely two. So it was worth it, right, to roll out. Now, I am, <laughs> I see that Diane just said, I'm always intrigued by how you loving, lovingly pat your clay when rolling it out until you rolled your slab and realized you do the same thing. See, we pat our clay. We love our clay. So I lost my train of thought because I got caught up in that. But anyhow, we smoothed out the clay and we're going to make our mug. We're going to roll our texture in. I, I know what I was going to say. So I smoothed this out, but I didn't release it. You know, I smoothed it out. And I've had a few people say when they roll their, when they roll their rolling pins, any rolling pin in their clay, the clay tries to roll up onto the rolling pin. And that happens because clay is sticky. The wood's drier, it wants to stick to it, that's normal. But by compressing it down, it sticks it onto the board so it's not gonna roll up. Plus, I'm using a big enough sheet of clay. If I was using a tiny sheet of clay, uh, I would have some difficulties. Now, yeah. I've got a... Could be a little bit of a side camera there. Yeah, I wanna do the side camera, let's do that. So I'm gonna grab my step stool that I keep under here because my work table is actually too high for me. Um, a little side tidbit. If you want a work table that's the perfect height for your body, you want it to be hip, hip high. So my hips are a few inches shorter than this work table. So it's really not where I want it. You can also check your elbows too, because when you're rolling, you want to make sure you have enough force to roll the texture in. So I, I just stand on my step stool when I, when we get the new studio built, I'm going to fix this situation. <laughs> it won't be an issue. So I'm going to line this up and then I'm just going to roll. And this is a continuous pattern. So you don't have any problems as far as, and you can hold the handles or you can roll by the body. doesn't matter. Excuse my head. Hopefully it's not in the way. You switch to the other camera. So you can walk it along. Bunnies! Or... You can roll it. Sorry, I'm bumping all the stuff. Or you can roll it. Your choice. Whatever you want to do. But now we've got a bunch of bunnies. And that pin rolls out long. So you can do like 12 inch by infinity platters. So you can go forever with those. Baby has a, Bailey has a tabletop roller. Um, yeah, Bailey is the company that I got my rolling pin from. I love Bailey's rolling pins. I mean, slab rollers. I was looking at the rolling pin. <laughs> All right, we're going to flip our slab around because I want to cut it, but I want it facing me. So, yeah, I love Bailey Pottery. Uh, all of, you know, their, their slab rollers, their extruders, their, their pottery wheels. I'm going to bring it back up to the top. Right? Yeah, bring it up to the top. So my mug is a four by 12. That's the template you cut. And we're gonna cut the top straight up and down. And the bottom. Have Kevin cut off three inches of, right? I know, he needs to cut three inches off my, my cabinet. That's been, we've been talking about that. Because I have another work table that's the perfect height but it's not my filming table, it's just a work table. So we've got, we're going to take this clay here 
and this all gets recycled. I'm actually going to use this one to make the handle because we're making a handle today too. Scooch that over there. Clay is still a bit sticky. That one didn't want to release. There we go. Clean up my edge. Okay, so we have bunnies. I might recut that side. I've got enough to do another bunny. Uh, yeah, we're going to just cut a second one right now. And then the bottom here is going to be for the bottom of the mug. So when I'm working and making a series of mugs, I usually make six or eight at a time. And I'll do this whole process where I will roll out my slab, I'll add my texture, I will cut out all my little templates for the bodies, and so I'll have a whole bunch of those on a board. I cover them with plastic so they don't dry out while I'm working. And then I'll make the bottoms, and then put it all together, and then pull the handles. Although lately I've been pulling handles a little sooner. I usually pull the handles before I start even making the mug now, and I actually did pull a handle before. <laughs> all right. So the bottom of this is going to be four inches. So a four by 12, this is just a piece of craft foam that I cut out to be four inches by 12 inches. It will fit a four inch cookie cutter. And I know we're all like, ah, but it doesn't. But that doesn't matter. It's, it does, I promise, it fits. So four inch cookie cutter, four by 12 inch mug. So we're gonna cut our bottoms. And this is the difficult part is you have to pick what you want for your bottom. So there's one bottom, one bunny bottom, and I think this one here, two bunny bottoms. And then the rest of this clay, you make a little trinket dish. This would be a sweet little trinket dish right here with this bunny. Um, or I'm gonna save this section out because I might do that later with that piece, but not right now. This right here, we're gonna make a handle with in a bit. So we're just gonna set this off to the side and we'll get back to that later. All right, so let's make, let's make some mugs. So I start with the textured bottom and because this is textured, I could have used my flexi bat and made my clay share bottom, which I will probably be doing most of the time from now on. But for these, I'm going to go ahead and just take my stamp that I made that has my initials. I just carved it in a piece of clay and then bisque fired it. And I'm just going to stamp it in there. And that's how I sign pieces when I texture the bottom. Okay. So now, put those there. Move this one over here. And we're going to get our banding there. What do I like as my best work table? Uh, I, I don't buy them. We make them. So we, we build them. And uh, when we do the new studio, I think Kevin will join me for a few classes and we'll talk about the right size table for what you're going to be using it for. So I got a bucket of water and I'm going to take my sponge. These bunnies, this rolling pin has a a right side up. Not all my textures and patterns do, but this one does. So this is the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and smooth that rim. I just ran my sponge over it inside and outside. I'll be refining this again after it's done, but I just want to do that right now quickly. And then we're going to slip and score. <laughs> Keep your bunnies rolling <laughs> springtime. I know. It's funny. March March is the month that I look I love winter I love snow but March is the month that I'm like okay I'm ready for spring so now we're gonna slip and score the edges that we did cut on a bevel I don't think I mentioned that and this slip is made with magic water and just little bits of the clay that you're using so you want your slip to be made from the clay you're using, you don't have to use water. It just, 
it just does better. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna flip your slab up and you see it's still floppy, that's okay. You want it to be floppy. We're gonna line up the inside edge here of what will become the outside flap with the middle of the inside. Does that make sense? And then we're just gonna line it up. And then you check your seam. It looks good, so we're gonna roll it on up. On a bevel is so that we can have a really nice join. That bevel join gives a nice layered and good adhesion. And it also is easier to get them to lay flat against each other. When you do what's called a butt join, um, they just, they don't line up very well. And also you can't add volume, you'll pop your seam. So there's the outside. And then for the inside, I'm gonna take this red rib and I'm gonna smooth out that join. And I'm just scooching this along. And we will fix the messiness of the rim later. Now we're gonna flip it over. This one's a little thick. You know, if I was gonna put a lot of volume into this mug, I'd want it this thick because you need that material to stretch. Let's grab our bottom. And then I have just a little wooden bat insert from Studio Pro Bats, but you can make your own boards. You can get yourself a little six inch by six inch piece of plywood and you can make your own little work boards. And then I'll be using my Shimpo banding wheel. You can use any banding wheel you want. I do have a Laguna banding wheel that's really nice, but it is not as nice as the Shimpo. I wanted it to be because it's a little bit less, but it's not. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Uh, it's just not as smooth. And I think if you didn't have a Shimpo and you only had the Laguna, you would never know the difference. You would never know. So we slipped and scored, and now we're just gonna flip this over, and then we're just gonna line this up. And I do have a little, I'm not sure where I put it. I have a great little square of shelf liner uh, material that I, I put on this so that it's like a non-slip slip pad for it. Wow, my rim is all, it's pretty broad. So now we're gonna go ahead and really make this look nice. Now we have to join the seam here. So we're gonna just turn this, holding my finger down, and then I'm just gonna curl my finger up. See how my little wooden insert's sliding around? I'm gonna do a little. Water sometimes makes things stick really well. That'll help, there. And then we're just rolling it up with our finger just like that. You can also use that yellow rib again. Look, and this is sealing the outside because we joined two pieces of clay. You wanna seal that. And then if you wanna do a little beveled undercut, let me see if I've got, use this little wooden potter's knife. And these come in your your basic pottery kit. Yours won't look like this. This was actually hand carved and, and given to me by one of my clay share members. But yours would look just like this, but not carved. And I don't use it much because it's so beautiful. I usually use my other ones, but um, sometimes when I'm filming, I like to get it out because it's fancy, right? And then, let's see. And then I'm gonna use this little quarter inch flat craft brush, it's nothing fancy. I'm gonna dip it in my slip and then we're gonna go into that inside seam and I'm just gonna swirl it around. We're not trying to stretch it, we're not really not trying to, to smush it too much. We're just sealing that up on the inside and if there was any slip or anything in there, you're just smoothing that out. And while you're working on a mug, if you notice your seam has popped, you can you know, use this to go back in and smooth it out. Use a 12 inch cake decorating wheel with ball bearings and it's seriously awesome. And it was half the price of the smallest shimpo. Ooh, I might have to look into that. 
Shimpo does not make banding wheels anymore? That was their, you mean Shimpo, well, Nidec bought them out. So Shimpo and Nidec, you know, sometimes they're calling them Nidec now, which is strange, but it's the same, they were bought out. So we're just smoothing our rim. Now, you wanna get a really round rim? Yes, I do. All right, so little four inch terracotta pot, 95 cents at the store. Now you can make your own clay rounder, and I have a little tutorial on doing that, but this you can just buy, and you can have a whole bunch of them if you need to rest your mug with it on it. And so you put that on there, make, making sure you clean off the outside. There we go. So we get this perfectly round outside, and then we can go in and smooth out our rim. And I'm gonna take my fingers and just kind of pinching them together and letting that rest on the rim. And I want a slight bevel on the inside, just because it'll, it'll give a better drinking experience to the user, it'll feel better. And that's important when you're making a mug. Now, this one is a straight-sided mug, which is great. Um, but it's thick, and we could add a little pizzazz to it. Add a little uh, volume to it, right? So if we take our rib, and I like to use these red ones, and we're going to put it down inside to about here, and then I'm just going to smooth it sideways like this. I need a teeny camera to go inside. And I'm also holding the outside like this with my hand. You're on the camera too? Uh, I can roll the camera too. I just rolled back up to one. No, I'm, I'm going to two, three. No, go to two. Um, so I have my hand here so that it's supporting that seam. I don't want to pop the seam, but I do want to add volume. And so you just keep turning. And do you see the tummy growing? <laughs> it's like nine months of pregnancy in one. You know, you start first second, third, you know, and then you've got first trimester done, and then second trimester, and the next thing you know, it's time. So the thicker your slab is, the more clay you have that will stretch, right? So you can just keep going. I mean, really, you can make it as thick as you want it to be. If you start to see your clay cracking, uh, either you've reached the limit of the clay, because you stretched it too much, or your clay's a little too dry. So, you know, try working with it a little sooner if you can. Like, I'm working on this mug, and that slab is still sitting over there waiting to be curled up. I would cover that slab with plastic. But normally I would make all my cylinders and have the bottoms attached, and then I'd go back and just volume them all out. So I'm just going to slowly move up the mug on the inside. about halfway up the mug, I think. And I promise you, with enough practice, your hand-built mugs can look wheel-thrown. I'll have hand-built mugs and people will be like, oh, I love your wheel-thrown mug. They're like, yeah, it's great, except I hand-built it. So that's looking pretty good. Got a little tummy on there. So I don't leave the rounders in usually when I'm drying. Uh, I only have one, <laughs> so I should pick up some more, but I don't leave them in. You can just watch it because the clay is going to shrink and it will crack around that rounder. And then, you know, and then you'll be very disappointed. So let's deal with the rim. I do want to put the rounder back in. So if you don't clean your, your rounder off, usually I wet wipe them after I've used them, but this one I, I was bad and didn't do good housekeeping. So I'm rolling my hand down the piece against the rounder, and it's actually accentuating this outward curve because I'm doing a little inward curve. Just like that. And then I'm gonna press it on against the top because I really want this to conform 
to the shape. So now let's see if it'll release. If you try to remove it and it's stuck, just wait a few minutes. It'll come off eventually. Sometimes they do stick. JPP hand building mug demos, how you got in the clay last year. It is, it's easy. Um, I mean, I think the easiest thing to make is a plate, but a hand built mug is the next easy thing. So now we're gonna take that rib and I'm just gonna slightly volume out the top. And you see I'm using the side of my hand to support it. You know, I don't wanna get too carried away and push it too far out. I want to do gentle little movements. And it is still a hand-built mug, so you know if you make your mug and you feel like it's um, not perfectly round, well, that's how it should be. I mean, yes, yes, they can look like wheel-thrown mugs, but you shouldn't be trying to to make them look like wheel-thrown mugs. They should be, you know, look like a person made it with their hands from a slab. So there's the rim. That looks that looks all right. What do you guys think? Does that look all right? Not too bad. We'll go to the front camera and I'll give you a close up. Folks on Instagram can see, folks, everybody else can see. There's the seam right there. Uh, this, so how I address the seam, you get a couple choices. Uh, depending on how the seam is, sometimes it's seamless. <laughs> I know, um, so funny. But other times you can see it. What I do is I usually put my handle right on it so you don't even notice it because the handle's there. Uh, you can celebrate the join, draw a line up it. Some patterns that I do, I, I do that, I draw that vertical line up. Uh, this one I'm not going to do anything except put a handle on it. And if you get little, sometimes if you have fingernails and you gouge your piece, you just need to check and go back and smooth those out. I, I have a pinky nail that's slightly long, i got to take that down. Okay. So that one's going to sit to the side. Well, that is sitting to the side. Let's make a handle. Now, making handles can be a thing that people love. It can be a thing people hate. I have a three-step method that's going to teach you how to make a handle that I won't say will make you love handles, but it will make you detest them less because you need, you need handles, right? You need a handle has to happen at some point. So what I do is let's grab the clay that we just rolled out. I'm going to grab a hunk of that. And we're going to wedge this up. And I'm only wedging a little bit. It's actually harder to wedge a tiny bit because it's hard for your hands to wrap around this little bit of clay as opposed to, you know, a pound and a half or something. So we wedge that up. And then I think you should be on camera too. We are. Um, here I am directing too. <laughs> and so we're gonna make this into a fat carrot. It's gonna be slightly tapered. Now you can make it even if you want. You don't have to have a taper in it. So we roll that out and we're gonna grab our bucket of water. One of my teachers when I was first starting was like, oh, you're going to hate making handles. Um, and I was like, am I? <laughs> and so I took it as a challenge. So now I'm like, handles, get a handle on it. And then my other professor um, was like, we're going to make a bowl, and then you're going to put as many handles on it as will fit. So you'd have like 20 handles on a bowl. So you'd be pulling handles, and you'd do that for like three bowls, and it was just crazy. And they all had to be the same size, you see. Uh, so that got me really good at making handles. But this is easy. So we got our hands wet. We didn't dip the clay in the water. We got our hand wet. And we're going to do our first pull. And we're just going to put our fingers on the back and our thumb. And we're just going to do our thumb pull. And we just make a little line, just a little line in the clay. Flip it over and do that again. So this is the thumb pull. There's three parts. There's the thumb pull. Do that a few times. Then the scissor pull. So I'll actually tell you what each of them is for. The thumb pull is because you want a nice thumb groove to rest your hand in when you're drinking from your mug in the handle, right? And then we're going to do the scissor pull. That flattens it a bit. It's kind of fat. So we'll do the scissor pull and flip it over. And you can do a couple pulls on each side. Usually I do this over my bucket so I don't saturate my workboard. And then, and you can go back to the thumb pull. You can switch back and forth. And then the third one, oh, I just did it really fast. Scissor is the U, 
make a U, you grab it, and you pull. And so that's reining in the sides. So we have our thumb pull for our thumb groove. We have our scissor pull to flatten it out, and our U pull to keep it from getting too wide. And you do those three in any combination you want, and that's how you pull a handle. And you want to pull your handle till it's the same thickness as the mug you're making. So if you're making really, really thick, thick mugs, you don't want to put these tiny little thin handles on it. it. It won't look right, and it won't feel right. You'll feel like you're about to break your handle. And if you're making um, these tiny, dainty, little thin cups, and you put a big old beefy handle on, the cup's going to be teetering, right? So if your handle gets too long, and it's getting in the way of pulling, just nip that off. I like to make my handles about six, seven inches long, so I have plenty of room to cut off the excess because, you know, and you want to make your handles a little wider than you think. When I first made pottery, my handles were so skinny that a cup It took you a whole summer to learn how to pull a handle. Yeah. Uh, a pulled handle, I mean, it's, it's, it's really a, a fabulous thing. So once you get your handle pulled, you're going to set it off to the side to dry. Let me grab a board to put this on. And usually I will pull however many handles for the mugs I'm making. So whether I've already made all the mugs and they're waiting, like if they're wheel thrown, pull my handles, <sighs> sorry, the next day. Because you don't want to pull your handles and let them sit overnight. You need to use the handle pretty quickly, about 30 minutes later. So there's how I put my handles uh, down. Yeah, got a question? On camera one? What camera are you on? I wish we had a way to tell me. <laughs> I know, we need tally lights. Are you on right? one? We're on one. Look at the handle. So that's how I stick it so that air can get in here and dry. If I'm not going to be able to use it. Nice catch. You like that? I've dropped handles before. I dropped a whole tray once. I got a question that. for you. Go ahead. Uh, Tina from the UK. Hi, uh, Tina. My pottery teacher told me to put a sausage of clay inside on the seam to reinforce the seam. Is that necessary? Well, the reason we did that bevel cut and we overlapped it is we're replacing that coil. If you did a butt join where the two pieces of clay were going to butt up against each other, then you would want to reinforce that with a coil. But because we did that cut on an angle, and overlap them, you know, let me, let me put the handle down before I damage it anymore. Because I do want to use this for the other mug. <laughs> so, um, and it's a very good question you have. So let's talk about joins, if I can get this to sit over here. There we go. Okay. So we'll talk about the joins a little more. So I'll use my fingers, and we'll talk about how a butt join is just lined up like this. And if, if, you don't put a coil there, you have that little seam that will just break open easy. If we overlap one side, other side, and we press on it, well, what's going to happen? Maybe it works better this way. See it? As we press on it, it stretches, but it doesn't pop. You see? They're overlapped, stretch, but don't pop. So that's what I do, is I do that bevel cut, and then that saves me. As far as the inside on the floor, when we did the, um, the well, when we did the outside of the bottom, you know, I used this rib and it smoothed up that clay, so it kind of brought a coil up and joined on the outside. And on the inside, that slip that's in there is sort of doing the work of a coil as well. So it's, you know, the thing is, is it's all up to you. It's all what works best for you and your way of making. So if I am teaching something that you, you know, do it a different way and that way works for you, you don't, you don't have to change. You keep making it the way that you've been making it because that works for you. All right, so now we're ready to attach the handle, and I did make one a little earlier. They take, I would say, 30 minutes to sit up if they're just out in your studio. If you have them covered in plastic, they can last a couple hours. So if you don't have to, you know, if you don't have to rush to get your handle on, right? So we want to cut this, but we want to make sure we check our length on our mug before we do that. We have our mug here, and get my little clay knife. I'm going to cut, so here's the handle. I'm going to cut off. 
that clay. This clay gets recycled and we use this. We'll put that in our little pile over here off to the side. And so we've got our handle. And I think it's way too big. We'll just put it up to here to look. I mean, you can do this, but it's a bit ridiculous. So we're going <laughs> to cut it down a little bit. I don't want to take too much off the top. I like the, the top to be a little thicker. So we're going to keep the top and I'm just going to tap it out to flare it. So that's going to be our top. Let's line that up there. And then let's see how the bottom is. No, we still want to take a little bit off of it. So you see how my handle's still very pliable, but it's not super floppy. It'll hold itself. Let's see how that is. That's close. Uh, I think it's still a tiny bit. We'll take a little bit off. And then we're going to flare this out as well. But it won't be as much of a flare as the top. So you get this really beautiful shape. And let's check this. How's that? That's going to go there. This is going to go here. I think that's going to be perfect. Now, I'm going to lay this down on my board. And I'm going to do it this way so you can see. And I'm just going to roll my finger up. I don't always show this step um, when I'm making mugs. And I'm going to do it here. So what I've done is kind of flattened out that side so that it will join there. Now I have a trick. Where's my little guy? There he is. I have a one and a half inch flour cookie cutter. I am going to cut the top. Let me see if that's going to work. I do have a bigger one, so when I make big handles, I switch to my bigger cookie cutter. I have a two inch one. And then we're going to cut the bottom. So this gives a little like mitt or dog paw sort of shape as a way to finish your handle. And then we're just going to go ahead and clean this up by tapping it. Now, I think we're ready. Ready to go. Let's check. Because I could find out the handle's not going to work and I can just make another one. Or I can struggle with this handle for 10 minutes to try to get it to work when you don't have to. So now we'll slip and score the handle where it's going to attach. And I'm just going to put this on. We're not attaching it yet. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Little wiggle. So now I've got a bit of slip on here so I can see exactly where I need to score so I can score my mug and we're ready to attach it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The most difficult part is going to be picking a glaze, right? If you put your handle on too soon you will notice that your mug will stretch that where the handles attached you'll have the the mug kind of will pulled away a little bit it's not really a problem. It's, it's just your mug won't be perfectly round. So you want to take a minute and look. You want your alignment correct. There's nothing worse than putting a handle on and checking later and realizing that the bottom is attached way over here and you have a wonky handle. So let's roll up. I'm supporting the inside and I'm using my finger to basically roll this on. And we'll roll here at the top too. Now, we've got it attached. Looks pretty good as far as attachments go. I want to shape my handle. That's not bad. That's not a bad shape right there. Um, I'm going to just pull it up a little bit and adjusted it just a little. So I changed up the handle a tiny bit like that. So it has a nice place for your fingers to fit in there because you, you have to put your fingers in. Now, as far as cleaning up the edges, I use these little color shapers and you just go in and smooth the edges where the handle is joined and that really blends it in. And you do that all the way around. You also want to do that because it helps wipe away any slip. If you leave slip on the join as it dries, that's going to crack. And so that's one of the main causes of handles cracking. And that's it. It's, it's ready. Um, you know, sometimes I'll put my little rounder back in and then I will press 
up against where the handles joined like that and that will help keep it from getting out of the round plus I can also check it you know maybe put it back in the round if it had gotten knocked out and then take that back out and there we have it hand built mug yeah got a question for you handle oh. looks huge it's not really that big from Diane <laughs> she wants to know if you ever put feet on your mugs sometimes yeah uh, I do have um, did we do it on we didn't do it on the heart one but I sometimes do I make the bottoms different when I put feet on them though if you go watch my class on making the sweetheart mug the way we rolled that bottom over like that I, I would then put a little a little strip. I wouldn't put a coil. I'd cut a little strip of clay and I'd put that on. I would actually do a foot like I did in my, was it the wine? Not the, was it the wine? No, the fern cup. The fern cup class. Hundreds of classes on clayshare.com. It's hard for me to keep track of all the classes I have filmed for you all, but the fern cup could be an awesome mug and you could scale that up. So check that out and it has a beautiful foot on it and it's kind of a little more elegant than this and you don't have to use ferns you could put texture in like i just did it that is entirely up to you so let's see the seam yeah the seam it, you don't really see it do you it's in there but it, it's kind of hidden because we have the handle there um i mean you could see it it is there there is a seam but it's really not noticeable. And once we glaze it, you won't notice. And if you're not, if you want more of an undercut, uh, I would have done that before I put the handle on, but you know, I think that's a good amount. But some people want a sharp undercut at the bottom. So you can't find that color shaper that's medium um, or it's either too hard or too soft. So this is a silicone one. It doesn't have a brand. It was a no name brand I got in a set like years and years ago it's um it's so old the handle the paint on the handles coming off i would say it's a size six silicone it is a silicone i'm pretty sure so you don't want a rubber you want a silicone and it's it's just the right amount of i have other ones that are that are too hard i have some that are too mushy i, I know what you mean um they did a set Dick Blick did a set of kids color shapers once that was a good substitute for these. So perfect hot cocoa mug. I know because even, even in springtime here, it's still hot cocoa weather and everything's going to shrink 12%. So I know this looks monstrous, but I don't know if I have any out here, but believe it or not, other than the volume in the tummy and the shape, this is the same size template as this one. So this mug here is going to shrink to be about to there. This is the perfect size mug. And you can see this has a tiny bit of volume. Let's look at the three stages, right? We've got straight sides. Sometimes you want a straight sided mug. Here's one with just a little bit of volume. Do you see how there's a little tummy in it, but it's the same size mug. And then we have the extreme here lots of volume, nice round full tummies, right? So this mug will actually hold more liquid than this mug here because it's the same height, but we added more volume to it. This one's probably a 14 ounce. This one will be about a 16. So you can hold a lot more, give or take an ounce. So you slip and score with much more slip and you're always afraid that if you don't, your handle may come off. So once um, you've slipped and scored it, glaze fired it, it shouldn't come off. Like it's bonded, that glaze is holding it, everything's holding it. You just need enough and you really just make sure you have a good join. Some potters don't even use slip. They just score and attach. I, I would never be that brave, but if it works for them. Uh, but you know, if you're not getting cracking, then there's no need to change the amount of slip you're using. That's not really a problem. So they sell these at Michael's. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria, for that. And Blick has single purchase color shapers, soft and firm, uh, not a medium. 
Yeah, it makes sense with the shriek shrinkage. Each clay shrinks differently. Laguna B mix shrinks 12%. We're talking about shrinkage later today when we make our planters. Remember, we're going to make these fabulous square planters. And that we're going to talk about how to get the right size based on your shrinkage for your end product. So if you want that finished planter to be four by four, you got to make it bigger to account for that shrinkage. And I will teach you how to do that later today. All right, so there we have it, hand building a mug. I have about six or seven mug classes on Clay Share that are hand built, and then a couple more wheel thrown, and an extruded one. So there's a lot of mugs happening on Clay Share. So if you want to make a mug any way you want to make one, go check the classes out. Now, next we are going to be doing, we're going to be having Jeff join us from GR Pottery Forms. He's going to do textured lip dinner plates. So that's coming up next, and I will be back. Um, oh, then we'll have Chelsea with FlexiBats, and I'll be back at 145. So you won't see me again. You'll hear me, though, because I'll be moderating the other broadcast. So what's in the magic slip? So that's sodium silicate, soda ash, and water. The recipe is up on claysharesources.com, and um, you can find it there. All right, everybody. Take care. See you all later.